This animation is on what happens to a protein between translation and transport to the Golgi. As you're aware, this is a ribosome consisting of one large and one smaller subunit. The ribosome is the main component of translation and is the site at which the protein synthesis occurs. The messenger RNA has a codon which is complementary to the anticodon on the transfer RNA. This triplet encodes an amino acid which joins the tRNA molecule to allow elongation of the polypeptide chain. Once the polypeptide um, peptide bond has been formed between two amino acids, the tRNA detaches from the mRNA in order to allow the next transfer. What happens next? In this example, as soon as the protein has been fully translated, it migrates from the ribosome towards the rough endoplasmic reticulum. However, proteins may also be translocated in the ER during the synthesis on the membrane-bound ribosome. Once in proximity to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, the protein then enters via a pore in the RER membrane. The assembly of the polypeptide chain to the correct 3D conformation occurs within the ribosome on the RER. This is assisted by molecular chaperones. One of the major family of molecular chaperones of the HSP70 family. These are thought to bind to the unfolded polypeptide chain as it crosses the membrane and then mediates folding of the protein assemble of the multi subunit protein within the ER. Within the ER, during translation, proteins are glycosylated on specific asparagine residues. Oligosaccharide units of 14 sugar residues are added to an acceptor asparagine residue on a growing polypeptide chain. This process is catalyzed by oligosaccharide transfer membrane-bound enzyme. Another modification that occurs within the ER is the formation of disulfide bonds, which is catalyzed by disulfide isomerase. These disulfide bonds play a very important part in the assembly of secreted um, cell surface proteins, adding to this, its structural integrity and support to the protein. What happens next? Proteins that are correctly formed and have completed their specific modification processes are packaged into vesicles and then exit from the ER via ER exit sites, which appear to be randomly dispersed throughout the RER. These sites can be identified through a light microscope due to the lack of ribosomes on the ER membrane. Vesicles that have left the ER are enclosed in a COP2 coat, which consists of two subunits shown here in yellow and red. Some of the membrane proteins trapped by the coat function as cargo receptors, binding soluble proteins in a lubin. Once these coats have left the ER, they shed their coat and begin to fuse with one another. The fusion of membranes in the same compartment is known as homotypic fusion. Homotypic fusion requires snares. The interaction is symmetrical with V-snares and T-snares contributed by both membranes. The snare proteins are pulled apart by the NSF protein. The separated matching snares on adjacent membranes interact leading to membrane fusion and formation of one continuous compartment. The structures formed from the two vesicles are known as vesicular tubular clusters. These clusters are relatively short-lived as once they form they begin to bud off themselves. Unlike the COP2 coated vesicles from the ER, these vesicles are COP1 coated, however the structure of these two coats are quite similar. These vesicles and the vesicular tubular clusters travel quickly along microtubules to the Golgi apparatus where they're fused with the cis face of the Golgi, delivering their contents. What happens next? Proteins that enter the Golgi undergo further modification to suit their purpose. They then bud off from the trans face of the Golgi and travel to their intra or extracellular target. What happens next? Created using Powtoon.